Today we're in Jamestown, New York, their birthplace and final resting place of the first lady of comedy, Lucille Ball. Let's go check it out. It says the birthplace of Lucille Ball, born August 6, 1911, died April 26, 1989, the first lady of comedy. I love these old brick roads. But right in downtown Jamestown, New York, on the corner of East 2nd and Pine Street. Look at this Lucille Ball Theater. So cool. We're at the largest Lucy mural in the world. That iconic episode where Lucy, uh, Ethel, Ricky, and Fred go from New York City to Hollywood. Just like my shirt. Hollywood. We've got this classic mural. Oh. Vitamita Vegemin. Vitamita Vegemin. Vitamita Vegemin. Vitamita Vegemin. I can actually say it pretty good. And then right over here is the post office. You've got this great mural of Lucy and Dez at the Jamestown post office. Very appropriate indeed. And last but definitely not least, there's the iconic mural from the Chocolate Factory episode. Probably many people's favorite episode. Right here in an alley in Jamestown, New York. Here on the corner of North Main Street and West 3rd, we finally made it to the Lucy Museum. Let's go check it out. And there's that iconic set. Something don't look quite right though. That's better. Lucy, I'm home! You got some splaining to do. And who could forget that famous bread episode where Lucy put too much yeast in the bread. Instead of three cups, she put 13 cups and the bread came flying out of the stove. So cool. The Ricardo's New York apartment. We're in Lucy Ball Memorial Park in Celeron, New York to check out two iconic statues for two totally different reasons. Let's go check them out. Look at this amazing statue of lovely Lucy. She's wearing that iconic polka dot dress. The face is spot on. The hair. The entire thing is spot on. That's why they call it Lovely Lucy. It was done by Carolyn Palmer back in 2016. It says, Celeron, New York, childhood home of the first lady of comedy, Lucille D. Ball. You may ask yourself, why do they call this Lovely Lucy and not just Lucy? Well, because they have another statue here. Let's go check that out. Now, as far as the other statue dedicated back in 2009, it's called Scary Lucy, which represents that iconic episode 
when she's doing a commercial for the alcohol induced medicine and she has to do take after take and the name of the medicine is already a tongue twister to begin with it's called Vitamita Vegemin Vitamita Vegemin Vitamita Vegemin Vitamita Vegemin but as she does take after take she comes more and more under the influence saying the name even funnier and funnier now this statue was fine back in 2009 until the internet got a hold of it and notice the face didn't exactly resemble Lucy too well. So I mean the body looks great. The Vitamita Vegemin looks great. It's just the face is not quite quite up to par back in 2009. So that's why the city had somebody else come back and do the great lovely Lucy. But I do love that they didn't get rid of this iconic statue because in its own strange way, it has its own legacy as well. We made it to Lucy Lane where my friend Mary it's gonna show us around Lucy's childhood home. I can't believe it, it's gonna be so awesome. So let's get down there and take a tour of Lucy's childhood home. I can already see the garage is dressed with her uh, I, dress. iconic polka dot dress. And I'm preparing for our garage sale. So during the festival every year, we hold a garage sale here on the property. Oh, that's so awesome. All the fans get to come and we have the best price stuff in town. That's amazing. Yeah. I recognize this uh, grill over here too. Okay, the grill from the grill episode. Yes. So you know she lost her ring? Yes. But it wasn't in the grill. Oh, it wasn't? But it is now. <laughs> so over here we have a secret brick. Oh yeah. We pull out and then you can see her wedding band in there. Oh yeah, that is so cool. And whatever that wedding band is, it was found in one of the walls in the house. Oh, that's neat. So I'm not sure if it's a washer or what it is. Nice little tie in there. It's her wedding band now. That's perfect. I think I saw a picture of her walking behind the house here. When she was here in 1956 for Forever Darling. So, the kitchen. Nice. So when I bought the house, this kitchen was renovated. This woman, Elaine Sony, bought the house, she owned it for just one year. She's from Florida. Mm -hmm. She ripped the entire kitchen out, which probably had all the original walls because the walls are slats. Oh yeah. And she put in a modern kitchen. Hmm. When I bought it a year later, I ripped out the brand new kitchen, which is now up near the Tropicana room at, at the museum. Oh, okay. I donated it all there so that they could have lunches and dinners in the Tropicana room. Nice. And brought this kitchen back to the way it was. So the reason we know we're pretty dead on is that middle set of drawers right there. Yeah. That set of drawers came from the original set of cabinets that were in this kitchen. Oh, okay. They belonged to Lloyd Faulkner, who lived in the house seven, his mother owned it 70 some years. Huh. She bought it after, she got it after the hunts and had it till, um, till she died. Wow. Um, he had, Lloyd had that in his basement. His father used it as part of his workbench and he donated it back to the house so we know exactly how to build the covers. Jamestown still makes the same exact handles. Oh yeah, that's neat. So it was, um, it was, I was thrilled to be able to get the same handles. I love when things survive the generation again. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I know. So we had this woman, um, uh, what was her, Caress Bush. She was a historian on what people would have brought here when they they moved from one farm to another farm or even um, from ohio to here pennsylvania to here mm -hmm. she kind of knew the style what people would bring with them what they would leave behind they would always bring their rugs they would she said they always brought their high chair oh yeah which is weird that is so that's just an old high chair so a lot of the things in the house are referenced because that's what she said would have been period to yeah. uh, roughly 1920. 1905 to 1920 was the look I was going with. What about the stove? Does that actually work? The stove does work. As a matter of fact, I've had um, people come here and make dinner for me on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and serve it in the dining room. It's really cool. That's nice. Check out the style. So you know, you don't have to set it to 350. 
So if you get up close, you can see if you're making biscuits and you turn the dial to biscuits. Oh, yeah. You just turn the dial to what you're baking <laughs> or cooking because it's funny. on there. Isn't it's that written funny? Right on there. That is funny. But it does work. That's and, high tech for back then. <laughs> and we've used it. It was actually also no back porch when I bought the house. It was just a couple stairs you walked down. Huh. And Fred said, no, there was a porch there because Lucille used to hop out her bedroom window and hop down. Oh, or she'd out. shoot the squirrels from that oh, yeah. rooftop. Wow. So um, sure enough, taking the back of the house off, there was the roof one <laughs> from the porch. So the porch came back. That's so cool. You had someone actually live here to Thank tell you the, goodness, the right? history. Yeah. I love the history. So this calendar is one of my favorite things in the house. Oh, it's like to date. <laughs> the reason it's one of my favorite is because it was from when they lived here. And this particular place is the grocery store that Fred sold his vegetables to. Oh, neat. So that's right down near the lake. I love that it's 1923 on the calendar. Isn't that so cool? That, my husband found that and that was a great find. That is so neat. <clears throat> Just to place it, like even the plates. Oh, yeah. Um, in here, there's some plates. I'm gonna turn the light on for you. Okay. This is the dining room. I use it for my uh, embroidery storage. <laughs> um, Back then, your favorite grocery store or, or the bank or whatever used to have the plates to advertise their business. Oh, so yeah. if you were a good enough customer, you would get one of their plates with hmm. dates on it. So obviously the dates are all um, where they're supposed to be. And these are all local places. I, I love how everything fits the period in here. It has to, right? <laughs> right. It's it has to. Like you said, it's better than a museum. It it's is the, better than the actual here. place. This is one of the only houses in the whole neighborhood that has two bathrooms. Oh, yeah. So this is a lavatory. <laughs> this was my most expensive room in the house because this wallpaper cost me a small fortune. But oh, I wow. thought it was cool because like Lucy, all the different oh, episodes yeah. and all the different dresses That's and neat. costumes. And yet she's vintage. Yep. I totally so I love it fits in. The only thing we didn't go vintage in this house are the toilets and the sinks. Yeah, that's right. You can't. Yeah. We tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> you gotta... Some things have to be up to code. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, the light fixtures in the house are all vintage. We wow. did buy them new, but they are... Um, they're new old stock, which took forever to find some of this stuff. First of all, we, we have a store here. And the store is actually run from here, so if you buy something, it is coming from Lucy's childhood home. Not many people believe that, but nice. I can show you that it truly does. I'm definitely going to buy um, something myself. Everything in this, everything on our online store, 59lucylane.com, gets donated back to Perfect. the community. So we don't take any money here, we just donate it. I like a lot of it. We do donate a lot to uh, the breast cancer oh, that's foundation amazing. at the hospital. What year did you guys acquire the house? Uh, 2005. Oh, okay. 2005. It took us two years to bring it back to where it was. First of all, there were huge leaks that mainly were in Lucy's bedroom. Oh, yeah. So the place was a mess. Um, the furnace was one of those octopus furnaces oh, yeah. down in the basement. We had to get rid of that. We had to have uh, furnace and air conditioning so it would be temperature controlled. Also, there was no heat, no nothing upstairs. So the octopus came up fed some heat through here. So Fred and Cleo, when they were here, told the story that Cleo and Lucy used to stand here with their nightgowns and fill them up with hot air <laughs> before they ran upstairs. That's we fine. now have a furnace upstairs and air conditioning upstairs as well. This is an original poster from the time when the park was at the park, hmm. the amusement park. And um, Lucy used to go to that amusement park all the time. That's neat. This is where you probably saw the pictures with Lucy standing with the banister. Yes, I did. So Fred told the story that Lucy used to come down the stairs. There was a mirror here and she'd perform coming down. <laughs> and then this would be her stage. So the family would gather in the living room on chairs. She had a drape that hung up here, a curtain, a sheet, whatever she had. And the family would sit in there and they would open the drape and she would perform. That's so neat. So that's that picture you saw. Yeah. Of her touching the pole right here. That's so cool. I just can't get over this shot right here. <laughs> I've seen it so many times of her walking in to Hey, read. you want yourself holding that pole? Oh yeah, sure. I can do it. Just Yeah, you can just hold it. It's already recorded and then I'll take it. Cleo told us the story, along with Fred, of all the instruments that they played, how they hopped the trolley, what instruments, why, where they went. Um, 
There's a lot of history of music in this family. That's neat. Like tons of it. I didn't know they actually played instruments. They did, all of them. And they had to hop the trolley carrying these big instruments to go play. Oh, wow. But this piano is really cool because they did have an upright piano. This piano is from the Alstrom Piano Company. Do you know which instrument Lucy would have played? Was she the saxophone she maybe? She played the saxophone. Oh, wow. That's neat. That is cool, isn't it? That is cool. I stayed here most of the time for the renovations. Mm -hmm. When they took the kitchen ceiling down, there were newspapers stuffed in it oh, from yeah. the year that Fred Hunt owned it. Oh, wow. So it's really cool. And cool. they did that for insulation. Huh. I got two full newspapers and some fabric from a little girl's dress. Watch your head. Oh, uh, yeah. Bedroom. Lucy's mom's room? Lucy's mother's room. Hmm. So, according to history, these linoleum carpets are original to the house. Hmm. I have never been able to um, place them for date. I look in old Sears catalogs from that time period to see if you can find the pattern, which is basically the only way you're going to date it. Right. Um, this would have been the master bedroom, has two closets. Huh. And this dresser is Dee Dee's dresser. Oh yeah. So, the way I got this dresser was, um, Lloyd Faulkner had told me that this dresser existed. A friend of his owned it. She was an old woman. And she would she would give it to me if I replaced it and bought her another dresser. That's a good deal. I said it was a good deal. <laughs> so, she went out and shopped and bought herself the best dresser she could possibly find and she gave it to me. This dresser had tons and tons of paint on it. Oh yeah. And I had it refinished and here it is back where it's been. Back where it belongs. I have a great picture of Lucy Arnaz with the dresser and the mirror so you kind of got her reflection oh, in there. Neat. Which was really neat. That's got the skeleton key holes it on does. it too. <laughs> is it rare to have two closets back in those days? I, I would think it is. And two bathrooms? <laughs> I would think it is. Yeah. Here's another newspaper. Oh yeah. That was up in the ceiling from 1927. Huh. And this dress here, I bring here just for fans. It doesn't really belong here because it's not period to the house. Yeah. But this is her actual costume that she wore in fancy pants. Oh, neat. So people get to see how tiny she really was. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is cool. And I would have been happy just seeing the outside of the house. Like, oh, seeing all this is just like blowing my mind. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's fun. I couldn't let you drive all this way. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. This dresser belonged to Lloyd Faulkner. He and his brother shared this bedroom, and he just donated the dresser back to the house, so it's been here ever since Lucy lived here. That dresser's been in this house. You are so lucky. Yeah, Nicole. So this room was occupied by Grandpa Hunt and Freddie, the hmm. only two boys in the household. Oh, yeah. So um, Grandpa Hunt had a double bed, Freddie slept in a single bed. The water pitcher and the cleanup. Hmm. Okay, the cleanup bowl. You don't see that anymore. There was, right, but there was only one bathroom upstairs. Hmm. So when everybody got up to go to work, Dee Dee worked, the women in this family worked, they needed the bathroom to get ready. So the men had to rely on getting ready in the bathroom. Gotcha. So we found this little cool thing, which has a little drawer here. And in the drawer are Yes, vintage razor blades. <laughs> the razor's in the bathroom. Yeah. And what this is, is a shaving station. Oh yeah, that's neat. So they would shave. Hmm. Using the bathroom for the ladies. The bathroom. This is the original tub. Wow. Lucy's original tub. Hmm. And last but not least, Lucy's room. Oh yeah. So Lucy, and Cleo slept in the same bed. Oh, really? They had a double bed. The only thing original in here is that light fixture. Hmm. And I remember I told you Fred said she would hop out the window. Oh, this yeah. is exactly where the rooftop was hmm. way back then. That was amazing. You guys recreated that after somebody tore it down. Or now you know there was a shooting.
across the house. Yes, I did. I have a video of Fred literally standing outside recreating it. Oh, really? Cleo. So they were literally standing right here and they were shooting at an abandoned house that was across the lot. Huh. I know I have one of those metal detectors. I keep forgetting to bring it over because I want to go back there and see if I can find BBs. Yeah, that'd be something. They would have had steel BBs back then, right? Yeah, for I don't sure. think they made rubber BBs. Mm. Plastic. So they would have been metal. And inquiring me wants to find one of those BBs. Can <laughs> now, even know? though the grandfather said he would pay all the medical bills, they still sued him, right? Oh, and took so everything they owned. Wow. And he was in jail um, in Mayville. It was just a house. It wasn't really jail jail. Oh, but yeah. Freddie would go and stay with him. Um, when um, Cleo's mother died, she was forced to move to Buffalo with her father, who she didn't even know. Oh, wow. So everything just kind of fell apart. <laughs> this is just um, Lucy Lucy's closet. Oh, neat. So when I bought the house, there was a gas pipe here that was one of the, the we think the original pole for hanging clothes because mm -hmm. there were two girls in here and lo and behold it disappeared during construction oh wow by the way all the sheets and the beds are early 1900s vintage <laughs> and i do take them to have them pressed and starched properly because that's the way they would have done that's it the way then. it's done so that's my one extra set when people sleep over. I give you an A++ for your attention to detail. That's well, not sure. <laughs> thank you. I mean, when I do a bed, I do a bed properly. You can see they're all done. Oh, yeah. Everything is done with lace. Hmm. And that's the, way, that's the way the sheets were done back in the early oh. 1900s. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's great. Yes. I definitely appreciate your passion for it. Well, this and the bedspreads, by the way, are 1950s. So Lucy did a lot of advertising back in the 50s mm -hmm. and this was one of them um i think there's a little note on freddie's bed um, Hunt's bed. yes so i just chose these because i had them yeah but that was her advertisement for that very oh, yeah. um that bedding mm. isn't that cool that is super cool i really believe that their product comes from lucy lane <laughs> you can be my witness okay and it really does Oh, I like it. It is. Here's my shipping over here. And you that's your... your head. Okay. That's the name of your website too, right? 59, 59 Lucy Lane? 59, yep. Okay. So this is my shipping department. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's neat. Shipping. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And I donate everything back to the community. I so. definitely, yeah. Definitely appreciate it all. It just is what it is. You just have to watch your noggin. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Thankfully, I'm short, so... So, really so whenever you buy something from the website, you're definitely getting it from the house. You've, you we're, sure have we're proving it right here. All right. Thank you so much for showing me around. Now there's a very iconic photo of Lucy and Desi walking up to her childhood home. Right down this sidewalk, right in front of her childhood home. It took, took place right here in Celeron, New York. We're here on the corner of Lakeview Avenue and Buffalo Street for our final destination. All right, we're at our final stop of the day. We're here at Lakeview Cemetery in Jamestown, New York. Not to be confused with the Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio, but this is the final resting place of Lucille Ball. Originally, she was buried at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood, but her family decided to move her back home where she belongs here at the Lakeview Cemetery in Jamestown, New York. Let's go check it out and see what we can find. Now the thing that's special is they put these I Love Lucy hearts in the concrete to give you a path right to Lucy's grave. I've never seen anything quite like that and I've been to quite a few graveyards. So you just follow the, the hearts And the last heart is right here. It takes you to this cobblestone path here. And here's another heart. And there's Lucille Ball's grave right there in front of us. The first lady of comedy. I 
and she's buried right here. This is a amazing cemetery if you ever get a chance to check it out. It's kind of hard to see but she's buried here with her father Henry, her mother Desiree, and then of course there's Lucille Ball who died April 26, 1989 and her brother Fred Henry Ball who died February 5th, 2007. Now the I Love Lucy show broke down so many walls for future TV shows to follow. She was the first show to insist that her and her Cuban immigrant husband be in the show together back in the 1950s that was highly frowned upon. I mean, this is 10 years before the civil rights movement. So having an interracial couple on a primetime TV show was a huge no-no back then. But now you wouldn't think it's a big deal, but it's because of the bravery of Lucille Ball that that's even possible. She was also the first person to be pregnant on TV back in the 50s. That was a huge no-no too. You could get fired if you got pregnant on a major TV show but she insisted that they write it into the show and it was watched by 44 million people proving all those TV executives that they were wrong all along. And then obviously once Lucy had the baby, she needed a little time off and the, all the executives would be like, well, what are, you, what are we gonna do? We need to make money. How are we gonna keep the show going? And it was actually her husband's idea, Desi, to say, well, why don't you just play some of the shows we already recorded? And that's when the rerun was born. They were like, no one's gonna watch a show we've already played. And little did they know, people loved rewatching some of their favorite shows. So, and that's all possible because of this woman right here back in the 1950s and her bravery and refusal to say, let the big time executives boss her around. And, you gotta respect that. All right, now, like I do for all the famous graves that I go to, I wanted to leave a few mementos for Lucy. I wanted to leave this pot figure from my favorite episode when she was trying to keep up with the chocolate balls coming down the conveyor belt. She was shoving them in her hat, shoving them down her shirt in her mouth. And I also wanna leave my YouTube magnet. If you come to the grave and find my magnet feel free to take it believe the Lucy chocolate factory pop figure for Lucy and we're gonna leave that for her right here there we go all the way from Cleveland Ohio to Jamestown New York well, that's gonna do it for today. I just wanna say, until we meet again, thanks for watching. And thank you, Lucy, for all the great laughs. Back when I was homesick from school on TV land and Nick at night. So until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.